okay this is kind of difficult to film um, but the upper mechanism that the input lever that looks like it's mostly going back and forth um, I'm going to show you that it's actually elliptical and here's how it's elliptical and it's exactly how the bottom of the input lever um, creates the translation coupler to go in an elliptical orbit um, uh, so this right here is a bar that goes across and you got a center axis right here that this oscillates back and forth like this and as this is going back and forth there's a little point right here which would be the center of axis that the um, input rod lever is revolving around so it comes up to here stops reverses direction comes about right there so this is the the mechanism right there of what controls the input rod what's on the input rod is this little is like a little uh, helicopter blade on the end of a this blade which basically goes like this but that little point right there is connected to the top of the input rod so as this is so as this is moving this is spinning around like this see so that is tracing an elliptical uh, elliptical orbit as it's spinning around it's coming up like this it's kinda hard to do I don't have the little tacks to fold over and have this go on an axis but um, and as it comes down like that it comes up like that so that's how it traces an elliptical orbit because the axis through which this is revolving around which is um, connected to the top of the input lever the set that axis it's rotating around which is here is constantly moving and that's what's causing the elliptical orbit of the bottom of the shaft you know scaled down if it's this much there it's a little bit less down at the bottom but what happens is um, and it's actually not this wide uh, I find that it's actually much more narrow like a very narrow slit cat's eye or I don't know whatever you want to call it but in any case this goes back and forth while this is rotating like that and that's the mechanism um, that causes the top of the input lever to go in an elliptical orbit the center around which it's rotating is moving and so that causes the elliptical orbit like that I wish I could do a little bit better demo than this if I had those little tacks that come up and then you bend them over and then I can actually put a pen there and trace the circle but I don't have those so anyway hopefully that makes sense and what I'll also show is what the purpose of the copper rod on my on the lower shaft on the machine uh, what purpose that serves so ho hopefully this will come in clear enough and uh, you get the concept but that is the upper mechanism for the uh, top of the input um, shaft and what I found is that even the back and forth motion without almost any elliptical orbit to it at all will um, cause the translation coupler to go elliptical for the reasons uh, purposes that I showed so anyway hopefully uh, that's helpful okay so I'm going to show um, the purpose of what this copper rod is and um, how it disconnects this in, this lower shaft from the translation coupler how they can move independently and they're not connected to a to a common axis see because when I'm going like this this shaft here which tra connects to the upper um, translation coupler is not spinning like this I can hold it perfectly still and go like that yet the bottom part is able to rotate freely around and that shaft is actually locked to the plate that the heavy weight is connected to so here's my little trick on a low budget low tech way to uh, accomplish this is that's all that's right there this is right there and so you have this rod which is welded directly to that plate there and that's what's going into that uh, swivel bracket that's what's welded in there right so how do you disconnect them is I just use this as a sleeve and then I put this in here so that when the translation coupler is here and this rotates like that it's completely disconnected which means 
if I just stop this like this, the blower part can still freely rotate. So that's how I did it. That's not the method Skinner used, but it works. And uh, so I just made do with whatever I had available to me and to uh, make it fast, uh, you know, make the build quick without having to worry about all kinds of different parts and joints and all that kind of stuff. But that works perfectly well. You know, on a big scaled up unit, you probably want to do something maybe a little bit more um, better than that, but that does work. So that's why that can ro this can rotate freely in the translation coupler and it's not fixed to that. And um, likewise, if this upper mechanism is rotating around here, and if you lock up the bottom, this can still freely rotate around the top, which means that they're, in, they're not directly proportional to each other. And that's what allows gravity to come in. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense to you, and that's why I did it that way. Cheap, easy, simple, and it works. So very important to disconnect the lower shaft from the translation coupler to rotate independently so the translation coupler can spin around, lock this up, and they don't jam each other up. So that's how you keep the system open.